Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Behind me is a website, but it's not an ordinary website. It's a website that you can control. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got an email from this guy who is live on his end, uh, Alec, and uh, he's got a website where uh, he set up his pretty much the entire house, well, at least from the exterior, uh, connected it uh, so that you could control lights and inflatable Christmas uh, decor and, and whatnot, all in the spirit of the Christmas holiday, but for a reason, uh, to help bring up awareness and raise funds for celiac disease. Alec, what was the reason you emailed me in the first place to let me know what you were doing? Because it was kind of, a, seeming to me it was random. It was cool, but it just kind of, you know, took me off guard for a second until I really figured out what you were doing. Well, to be honest with you, Chris, what happened was uh, over the years, being a longtime Internet guy, I built up my address book, I guess, from correspondence I've had with people, and all I did was a one-time mailing of people that uh, I had had discussions with. And so I could dig in my archives, but somewhere in there, you know, I must have sent you an email sometime in the last couple of years. It just, uh, maybe it was without context, because this is the first, I've heard of, you know, certainly, heard of people before allowing uh, other individuals to control like Christmas lights or you know light bulbs throughout their house but you've taken it to a completely different level you know right now uh, if I'm looking at your website it's at komar.org k-o-m-a-r.org and then from there I think you've got a link to these various pages I could control garage icicles uh, the balcony lights including a train inflatable homer Santa tree roof icicle chimney stars sidewalk lights Giant lighted Christmas tree, SpongeBob and Elmo, Frosty and Snowman and family. Uh, I can inflate and deflate any one of these uh, characters. And then I think what's interesting, in this little form field, I can enter text and in real time or near real time in the picture, I can see that text show up as a, like a text message right here on this little monitor. Anybody can do this, not just uh, anybody. And you've got about 242 people watching those Christmas lights right now, live. That's right. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. Actually, last time I looked at my geolocation stuff, Chris, uh, people from 122 countries have, have come by so far. So you're right. It's, it's, it's anybody. So is this your regular home office throughout the year then with all the Santa decor? Well, it's not quite over the top, although it looks pretty scary at Halloween because I do a similar setup at Halloween. Yeah. But uh, normally my office is a little bit neater, but I'll be the first to admit my office is pretty, pretty darn messy. Now you've got a, uh, a a Hulk here in the middle, and you can control the Hulk making noise? Well, actually, uh, on the outside of the house, there is a nine-foot inflatable Hulk, and if you see my website, I kind of won him in a contest and had a ton of fun with them. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood. So actually, there's a button there where you can try to control the Hulk, but if you click on that, uh, it will tell you that the Hulk is not controllable. You're not streaming live video as much as you're streaming live picture updates. I mean, can you explain well, yourself correct. a bit? So what you're seeing there is uh, JPEG updates every three seconds. Um, I don't have the, the bandwidth uh, to stream video from three webcams to all the people worldwide that are looking at it. So uh, what I do is, is JPEG updates every three seconds. And you've got, I'm looking right now at a uh, high def view, but I could very easily, uh, you know, make it, well here, if I open up the webcam to watching grass grow in the front yard, and then if, see, people are, looks like they're controlling lights right now. I mean, does it happen pretty much all the time? Yeah, it, it happens all the time. Uh, X10, are you familiar with X10 technology by chance, Chris? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, X10, unfortunately, is a bit slow. You certainly don't have millisecond response times. And so... Uh, you know, typically it takes about, oh, anywhere between a second, second and a half for when I actually hit a button here for the uh, switch or light to change. So actually there's a throttle mechanism so that things can only change once every two to three seconds. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. So it's not quite, you know, lights aren't blinking on and off 100 times a second just because fundamentally the X10 technology just won't support that. However, there are times when the site gets really busy that they certainly could blink that fast. How does your electric bill look this time of year? Well, Chris, a lot of people ask that question, and, and uh, the cost is about $3 a day, believe it or not. How the heck did you pull that off? Well, it's uh, 17,000 lights, and like you said, in, inflatable Elmo, Homer Simpson, SpongeBob, and all those guys. But 
if you scroll down on the bottom of the page there, there's a circuit layout that is mostly for my behalf to make sure I don't overload things. So the total current draw is 65 amps. And then if you do the arithmetic, um, you know, that comes out to about 7,500 watts times five hours a day times 30 uh, days a month times 10 cents a kilowatt, and it works out to about 100 bucks for the entire month. You're located in Colorado? Uh, that's right, near the Republic of Boulder, if you're familiar with the area. Uh, not too much, but you're working with the uh, University of Maryland, uh, specifically in the, the Center for, and you'll have to pardon if I'm saying it wrong, the Celiac Research? Yeah, actually, you've said everything pretty darn good, uh, Chris. It's actually kind of nice talking to someone who's actually done the research beforehand. Um, that's correct. The University of Maryland Center for Celiac Research is probably, at least in my opinion, the ones doing the most leading-edge research on celiac disease. Um, celiac disease is something my kids have, so it's a personal cause for me. And basically what it is, it's an intolerance to gluten. They can't eat um, uh, wheat, barley, oats, or rye. So no beer or pizza for them when they get bigger. And you take donations that are passed directly onto the center? Yeah, actually, the donations go directly to the center. In fact, if, if someone donates, I don't even know if it, if, if it happens. I have to check with the University of Maryland, which I do about once a week, and say, hey, how much did we get this last week? And let me update the total so far. Um, the webpage shows we're over $20,000. The total amount is actually closer to twenty-five dollars uh, as of today. Is that total or just this year? That's total. That's to I've been doing this for three years now. It's the third year I'm doing it. Okay. Now, I mean, like I said, I've seen other people that have similar setups, you know, where you can control lights over the Internet. And that's, that's kind of cool. But what about other people uh, doing something similar in terms of uh, not just doing it for doing it, but uh, specifically to raise awareness for one cause or another? You know, there's a, a lot of people out there with Christmas lights that take donations. They'll put, like, on curbside a donation box for toys or cans of food or, you know, take checks or something like that. Uh, I'm not familiar with someone who's specifically using, you know, home automation technology to control Christmas lights for charity. There are a number of sites out there. Drive Me Insane is probably one of the original ones where a guy, you know, allow, has a webcam and people can turn stuff on and off at his house. You've got, uh, obviously you're using X10 for the uh, technology to allow people to toggle things on and off uh, you, well, over the internet, but what about the webcams or these cameras? What, what, uh, what's the brand? Well, the webcams are D-Link DCS 6620G uh, wireless webcams. Um, they're about, uh, this is the third year of using them, hope to get another year out of them. They're not too shabby. Uh, one is located um, in my office that uh, I'm actually pointing to right now. Of course, you can't see the webcams. Another one actually sits in my master bedroom, which, you know, causes lots of jokes. And uh, that one is looking at the front yard, uh, the grass. And then there actually is one in my neighbor's uh, house across the street, and that's webcam one <laughs> that is taking a look at the front of the house and gives you the best view of the, best view of the inflatables. So it's kind of funny. Sometimes, Chris, people say, oh, your neighbors must hate you. Well, first of all, I live in a family neighborhood, and so the parents think it's a hoot, and, of course, the kids just love it. And then, my gosh, you know, the guy across the street lets me put a webcam in his house and, and you know, use 802.11G to transmit the signal. So uh, I think I'm okay in my neighborhood. Yeah. So you, you plan on doing this pretty much indefinitely. I, I tell you, you've uh, made a pretty good run of it. It's hard to say. I mean, you can relate to this, Chris. There's a lot of software behind the scenes. It's running on uh, uh, three dedicated Linux servers using Apache. It's written in Perl using Mod Perl for course for performance. So the software is all written. Of course, software sometimes rusts and need a few tweaks here and there, but the infrastructure is in place to do it. And the, the main issues I have to deal with, of course, every year is putting all the darn stuff out and hoping that the big winds don't come up or ice storms or something like that. Well, it sounds like you've rolled your own for the most part, taking uh, bits and pieces from here and there. That's correct. Like, for instance, you mentioned the instant message on uh, webcam where people can type in messages. Um, all that is is, you know, like you said, a form field takes a string. Um, that string is then um, loaded into a file, and then that laptop is running Firefox using the reload every extension. So every two seconds, it just refreshes, and whatever it gets, it comes up. So you're right. It's, it's a lot of roll-your-own. Nothing super complex in terms of technology. Pretty standard HTML, CSS, JavaScript, AJAX, etc. But, you know, like anything else, a lot of integration that makes it all work. If someone wanted to do something like this themselves, how would you uh, tell them to go about doing it? You know, there's a couple aspects of it, too. One is the webcam itself, and you're much more knowledgeable about that stuff than I am. So it seems to me, you know, using something like, you know, you have set up is the way to go there. 
And then in terms of the home automation technology, uh, that's simply a matter of writing a web front end that then interfaces with, with some, you know, analog or digital device that ends up sending, you know, control signals um, to control stuff. How easy X, is it? For... X10 is kind of nice. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris. X10 is nice because yeah, you don't have to retrofit your house. You can send the signals through your house wiring. Eventually, there are some emerging standards in wireless home automation um, that would be, you know, probably better solutions to go with in a few years. Well, that's what I was going to ask about the X10 stuff. I've never owned an X10 device. I've had friends, you know, sh do things like, ooh, here, you can press this button and control my... And I, I thought about that, too. I thought about, well, it'd be kind of neat to have a web interface to, like, a light somehow in my office and have people flip it on and flip it off using chat commands or sending some kind of uh, signal over, over the Internet. But I, I, I probably wouldn't know where to begin. I mean, other than, well, maybe it is as simple as getting an X10 device and uh, putting it out onto the, uh, the greater interwebs. Right. The, uh, the key part of it is, and I don't know how technical you want me to go, I'll try to keep it at a pretty high level. There's a device called a firecracker that sits on a Linux laptop that's uh, in my closet here. And uh, basically what happens is the public web server gets the request to toggle a zone. Um, that actually sends an HTTP request to the laptop that I expose outside my NAT. Um, the laptop here gets that request and then converts it to a command line program called Flipit, which then sends that signal out to the X10 firecracker. Then I have some X10 receivers. Those pick it up, and then, of course, the X10 modules, you know, get the command, and voila, things happen. It, it happens literally in about, like I said, a second to second and a half, and then there's a few other seconds delay because, again, what you're seeing is JPEG uh, updates that are every three seconds. Gosh, it sounds like you're right, a little complex. They, they don't make it any simpler than that? Well, I, I think they're working on making things simpler, but quite frankly, Chris, I just don't think there's a strong demand uh, from the consumer side to say, hey, um, we want to buy stuff so we can easily let people anywhere on the Internet turn our stuff on and off. Well, it's it's one of those things that uh, we've kind of, well, doesn't really work. We kind of, we have to, much like yourself, kind of hack things together uh, to do what we do using uh, our live video stuff. But you could use, I mean, for video, if you ever wanted to do it, I mean, they're pretty much now almost a dime a dozen if you'd even have to pay that much. We use Ustream.tv and I just have uh, this particular live video feed is um, on a dedicated Quest DSL connection, just a regular old DSL connection and uh, works just fine and then from that point it gets sneezed out to well how many people are watching us right now? Uh, well about as many as is there, well not as many as watching you. I've only got 250 viewers although I've got a live chat room uh, that's got uh, just about the same amount in there it looks like and then you've got 319 people now we keep adding people here but I suppose it gets more popular as the, the night wears on. It's a cumulative on. effect you know. Yeah. So but but you're right the uh, you know your solution right there using the Ustream to take care of the whole broadcast and stuff like that is kind of a neat little solution. The D-Links are again three-year-old webcam technology and it's not clear to me they have an easy way to uh, pull an MPEG-4 video stream off of there. But, you know, heck, next year maybe it's time for me to upgrade webcams and then uh, rock and roll. One thing I will have to do, though, Chris, is because I have a single IP address, I'm using standard Comcast service, <laughs> um, I'd have to expose all three uh, cameras, you know, out to the outside to somehow push that stream up to Ustream, I assume. Well, not really. I, I, I believe that... Uh... I mean, off off this particular connection, uh, no one really knows the originating IP, um, other than well, of course, Ustream being th that point through which I'm pushing. No one can see my that particular IP address. Of course, if I log into chat and whatnot, then yeah, certainly some of that uh, detail would be surfaced, unless of course I'm surfing, you know, through various means and in other ways. I mean, I it, you would probably be able to talk to well, if it was Ustream TV, talk to them about the the security protocols in place uh, so that uh, uh, you could keep a lot of that information private if you wanted to keep it private. I know that'd be great if you you know put in a word with them or maybe I'll have to check them out because sure. uh, you know it's again it's for a good cause it's a ton of fun you know been doing it for three years and then uh, of course I don't know if you know the story but before then it was it was uh, it was a, perhaps a little bit of a funnier story. Do you remember the hoax simulation? The yeah the which one? Uh, and from 2002 to 2004, I had the same setup. People on the Internet were coming around and changing my lights on and off, but technology wasn't quite so advanced. Does this ring any bells yet? Not yet. I've okay, seen a lot of things on the Internet. So, so what happened in 2004 is the media got a little carried away, 
And uh, they came by and wrote a story about it. Next thing I know, it went out on Associated Press to everyone in the world. Wow. So everyone in the world was turning my lights on and off in 2004, and then the local ABC station took me up in a helicopter. And uh, then, you know, they had me up in a helicopter doing a live report when my lights blinked on and off. There's only one problem about the whole thing in 2004, Chris. It was a hoax. It was a simulation. The lights were never changing. Oh, <laughs> So what it was was a set of eight still images that I'd taken, and if you go to comar.org slash Christmas slash hoax, uh, uh, you can all, all write up about it. But I had taken eight still pictures, and then all I was doing was using the uh, GD uh, library with uh, Pearl to kind of swap those back and forth, and it had a few tricks, like, you know, a car would come by or my garage door would go up or something like that. Oh, my God. That's yeah, funny. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. You know how mass media is, you know. No yeah. one ever came by, you know, at night and said, well, geez, you know, how come – this thing's in all the papers, the lights don't blink. But the helicopter was funny. That time they actually did blink for 45 minutes because I gave my wife the wireless X10 re remote and had her just hammer it from 6 to 6.45 while I was up there. I mean, heck, going up on a helicopter ride for the news, that was kind of fun. Yeah, that is fun. Well, very uh, cool. The video's on the site. If you go to comer.org slash Christmas slash videos, um, you know, I captured it. And uh, you can also see the videos a couple weeks later. I kind of outed myself uh, at Christmas time to the Wall Street Journal. I said, hey, I got a story for you guys. It's kind of crazy. But uh, they ended up writing something just because it gotten too far. You know, people were getting a little carried away and stuff like that. So it was time okay, to man. end the hoax. And that was 2004. And then in 2005, it, from then on, it's been 100% real, plus, of course, the, the $20,000 plus the celiac disease. Well, definitely keep me posted. I mean, I'll, I'll check in certainly next year or around this time uh, to see if, if you've indeed upgraded your infrastructure. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Chris. And, again, it would be nice if I had something as sweet as you did. Eh, it's not. Trust me, your setup is way more sweet. This is just, uh, this is just a webcam. No one... I assume, by the way, you have the same problem I have. Since I have a chat room, occasionally you have the potty mouse come in and the trolls. Ah, uh, yeah, but we moderate, so we've got people. Right now, we've got voice turned on, so no one can, uh, no one can say anything if we don't know who they are. Now you oh, okay. you don't have that filter, it looks like, but you've got certain filters in place as well. So. Yeah, you know, every Christmas season, I learn a few more cuss words I have to add to my profanity filter. Yeah, there's a uh, there's quite a few. I didn't real realize. Un real unfortunate. Yes, it is. It's not very jolly of people to do things. Yeah, it is kind of frustrating because I can understand at other sites, you know, especially, you know, some R-rated or whatever webcam site. But, gosh, you know, it's a family website, Christmas lights for charity and all that stuff. But you know how it is. If you get a 1,000 people, there's always at least one jerk. Yep. Well, we've learned that for every 1,000 people, there are actually 900 jerks. Uh, there's only 100. <laughs> Hey, don't send them my direction, okay? Well, I try not to. Hopefully the people I send in that direction are all good people. So, But anyway, Alec, thanks again. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're doing something like this. Um, you know, I, while I don't know anybody, at least overtly, who ha has celiac disease, um, you know, certainly it's one of those things that, well, you got to deal with. And the fact that you're helping the cause, um, you know, further lends credibility to the idea that you are, I think, uh, what did they call you, the jolliest man on the internet? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I'll say that it sure is a whole lot of fun. It's a nice way to bring Christmas cheer to people around the world. Very cool. Thanks again, Alex. Uh, Alec. I said Alex, but your name is actually A L E K. Apostrophe that's S, correct. that's Alex. It's mispronounced all the time, but don't even try that last name. Uh, what is the last name? Komarnitsky. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was going to say that. Komar.org, not Komarnitsky.org. Very smart, very wise. K-O-M-A-R dot O-R-G. Uh, really appreciate, uh, uh, well, you taking the time, certainly. It's taken us a couple weeks to get everything coordinated and whatnot, but I'm glad we did. And, no problem. Uh, it was fun to have chat with you here, Chris. All right, cool. Well, if anybody else out there knows of you know cool holiday websites that are really interactive, truly interactive, and possibly have a cause to them, let me know. My email address is chris at perillo.com. Um, you know, if it's cool enough, I'd love to share it with the rest of the community. Uh, certainly, I'm interested in websites that aren't just necessarily related to the holidays. I'm interested in any cool website, service, software, etc. And of course, if you want to join us in the chat room, so long as you're a good person, uh, we'd love to have you, especially when we're in unmoderated chat mode, which is typically when we're not doing videos. We love talking about technology every single day, but uh, sometimes the topic, you know, steers to more um, holiday-oriented uh, themes. Uh, but you never know what's going to happen, so just uh, take some time, 
Uh, we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so you should be able to find the time, at least according to my invisible watch, to stop by live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.